The flashing started a year after we lost our son, Timmy. At first, just a minor annoyance that woke me every morning at 3.33 a.m., the cable box by the TV sputtering erratically before settling back down. My husband, Alan, wrote it off as a faulty unit, scheduling a replacement. But after a few nights, I noticed a pattern to the flashing, short and long bursts, repeating at regular intervals. Was this Morse code? My breath caught as I fumbled for paper and pen to jot it down. Dot, 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 dash, 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 dot, 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 I, M, I, S, S, U. I miss you? I shook Alan awake, showing him the message spelled out before me. He grumbled, still half asleep. You were dreaming, Lynn. It's just the old box glitching. Go back to sleep. But the messages persisted night after night, too purposeful to be random errors. I'd turn on the TV at 3.33 a.m. and the input would be open to an on-screen keyboard. Hands trembling, I slowly typed, Who is this? The cursor blinked, then a response appeared letter by letter. Timmy? I gasped, a chill running through me. Our Timmy, our beloved little boy we'd lost to the sickness. Could it be? I rushed to wake Alan, but he reacted in anger this time. Our son is gone! He shouted. This delusion won't bring him back. Let him rest in peace. He said he would contact the cable company about replacing the defective box. But I knew this was no glitch. Someone, or something, was trying to reach out. For weeks, the messages continued. Timmy described his new existence, free of pain and filled with light. He missed us, but was at peace. I soaked up every word, half convinced I was losing my mind. Yet I couldn't ignore these signals from a world beyond ours. Alan's patience wore thin. He stopped sleeping beside me, spending his nights downstairs. We argued constantly. He wanted me to move on, but how could I abandon our boy? Letting go felt like betrayal when these messages offered a thread of hope. Then one night, silence. At 3.33 a.m., the box didn't flash. The TV screen remained dark and unresponsive. No sign from Timmy came. When I told Alan the next morning, his mood lifted for the first time in weeks. It's for the best, he said, holding me close. I returned the faulty unit yesterday evening while you were out. We can start to heal now. But every week I find an excuse to visit the cable company, swapping out our box for a new one. Maybe this will be the one Timmy uses to reach me again. Alan pretends not to notice my exchanges. He still doesn't understand. I know our son rests peacefully, the afterlife welcoming him with open arms. But a mother's love crosses even the veil between life and death. I'll leave this channel open, waiting patiently however long it takes, just in case Timmy wishes to speak to me once more.